Hi, I'm Jack Erickson, and Alex Sin is here with me again to show a new generative AI demo. Alex, what is this showing? I call it text text image. What I'm going to do is input a text prompt here in the box on the left, and we're going to feed that into a Llama 2 model to generate output text here on the right. We're going to take that output text and then feed it into a stable diffusion model to generate an image. Let's try it out. Let's start with what is Paris known for? And let's see what Llama 2 gives us. As you can see, it only took about two to three seconds to generate the output. Paris, the capital of France, is known for its stunning architecture, art museums, historical landmarks, and romantic atmosphere. I did cap this at 32 output tokens, and so it's about 128 characters, but still a very good prompt. Let's see what Stable Diffusion gives us. And as you can see, this will also take roughly four to five seconds to generate the output. Looks like this is the Arc de Triomphe. We can use the same prompt to generate other images as well. And in this one right here, we see some buildings in Paris. All right, so this is running two generative AI models back to back and pretty quickly. What hardware are you running on? I'm running on an AWS M7i.16x large instance. This is powered by our fourth gen Xeon scalable processors. Specifically, this instance has one socket with 32 cores. So this was running on a single CPU? Yes, but I've also taken advantage of a lot of the software optimizations available. For example, open source PyTorch runs on our one API library, and I've plugged in the Intel extension for PyTorch version 2.2, which features a new API called ipex.llm.optimize. What this does, is it does a lot of operator optimizations, as well as reduce the memory usage for your LLMs. We also take advantage of lower precision data types, including bfloat16, so that you get faster performance without loss to accuracy. Okay, so that's the LLM, but Stable Diffusion was also really fast. What did you have to do there? Right. PyTorch 2.0 introduced a new API called torch.compile. And what this does, it, it takes your code and does JIT compiling of your code and models into optimized kernels. Intel extension for PyTorch has an API called ipex.optimize, as well as a backend for torch.compile so you can get the most performance out of your Intel CPUs running PyTorch. Okay, so overall, just a few lines of code in your standard PyTorch. Was there anything else? There is. There are actually some environment variables that I set in my hardware to enable the most performance. You can refer to the PyTorch performance tuning guide for details. Now, the two environment variables that I set is the OMP num threads and LD preload. OMP num threads allows you to set the number of threads in the OpenMP library. And you want to set this to the number of physical cores you have on your hardware. As for LD preload, you want to set it to use the Intel OpenMP or libiomp library, as well as use one of the other memory allocators, TC malloc or JE malloc. These memory allocators have some additional optimizations and is much faster in terms of storing your data into the cache and reusing it based on how often you access that information. That's really useful to know. Um, so where can folks go to learn how to get the most performance out of their CPUs for their models? We put some resources in the description below, but you can check out developer.intel.com slash PyTorch for more resources, including how to download Intel extension for PyTorch for CPU and GPU, the link to the performance tuning guide for PyTorch, as well as other documentation, tutorials, and code samples, and more. Great, thank you. So yes, be sure to check out the links to the resources in the description. And again, thank you, Alex.